What's going on YouTube? Warstorm here coming at you guys with the, the in another intro to series video. Um, so today I'll be showing you guys Ancient Gears since the structure deck does release um, on Friday or, or released on April 15th. So you guys can kind of prepare for Ancient Gears. Um, I don't think they're quite as strong as mainly True King Dinosaurs, but obviously we don't get those cards for a little while longer. But I think Ancient Gears are pretty strong, decently strong decks. They're not spectacular, but they definitely... Do what they do very effectively. So, well, with all, um, if you're unfamiliar with Ancient Gears, are they are a very old archetype used by a character back in the GX era in the very first episode. So they're typically beloved by fan by fans of the GX era series, and they got a lot of um, screen time in Arc Five. So, um, definitely. So Ancient Gears um, are finally getting a lot of these cards in the structure deck. Some of these cards we already have in Raging Tempest, but overall the deck is pretty self-explanatory. It's a very very OTK oriented deck. You summon a big monster, and that pretty can't prevents your that similar to our mates prevents your opponent from doing stuff when you attack. And typically, you're going to punch your opponent in the face that turn. Um, it's not as strong as something like Fluffles, but it definitely can be pretty effective at what it does. And it's a really pretty decent deck. Um, so with all the way we're going to get to it. First off, the first monster we have here is the new monster we uh, this the cover card for the deck, which is Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon. is level nine. So if it's tribute summon, it has an effect that when it's tribute summon by tributing Ancient Gear monster. Hint, hint. Your little gadget here. Um, it will inflict piercing damage to your opponent, and if it's tribute summon by tribute gadget monster, your little gadget over here, it can attack twice each battle phase. So. You can usually tribute summon this via Gear Town or special summon it via you know numerous cards in this deck, and if it and every time it it attacks, your opponent can activate spell or trap cards, and when it does attack battle at the end of the damage step, if it attacked, it pops spell or trap cards. So that is obvious synergy with the deck because you can pop your Gear Town, you can pop your Ancient Gear Fortress. It just has a lot of um, very powerful cards, and it is a level nine, so you can make some cute some cool rank nine plays with it. Overall, I think it's a pretty strong card, and it's a staple at three in pretty much any ancient gear list because um, you want to get to it for you want to see as many of these as possible, and you will go three in a duel pretty pretty easily. Then we have the new one of the new cards, which is three ancient gear wyvern, basically a Stratos for the deck. Whenever it is normal or special summon, you can uh, search add one ancient gear card from your deck to your hand, but you cannot set cards the rest of the turn. That is very important. So you want to, typically with wyvern, you want to set your trap cards first before you do this. So if you're playing something like metal foes with this deck. For for example, you want to do all your Metal Foes stuff first, then summon your Wyvern. Um, uh, and it's a pretty decent power. Uh, obviously, it's a staple 3 up because it's your primary search card. Then we have the three Ancient Gear Gadget. So Gadget is a very interesting card. So if it is normal, a special summon, it can declare a monster type. And that that's turned if a monster you control attacks, your opponent card effects of that type cannot be activated until the end of the damage step. This allows Ancient Gears to deal with floating. While they do deal with floaters pretty effectively via piercing damage, other effects, it basically turns those off. And the other thing is also an Ancient Gear and a gadget. And it can change its name to different types of gadget monsters. If you are playing that old a Gajillion Dragon, I think its name is, that works with this too. The main thing is this is this is going to be, um, it's also a machine dupe target if I'm not mistaken. I don't play machine dupe in this list, but you certainly can. Um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty decent card, and if you're able to get three of the get these out, you're just going to go from there. Do you have the one ancient gearbox? This is mainly here to search off your Gigagun X. Um, if you search an ancient, if this is added to your hand off of your Gigagun, you can then add a Earth Machine with 500 or less attack. So then you can add a gadget. So basically, if you add this off a of Gigagun, this is an instant uh, fusion material for your Howitzer. It gets you a little bit further. You don't really need more than one because typically you're just going to search it off. You want to search it off your Gigagun. You don't really want to draw it. Next up for the last three Ancient Gear monsters, we have the Hunting Hound. Um, Hunting Hound, I believe, was released in Raging Tempest, so we do already have it. Whenever it's normal summon, it has a mandatory effect to burn your opponent for 600, which is kind of cute. And it has an effect that prevents spells and traps like most of the Ancient Gears when it attacks. But the main thing is, it is a walking poly. So once per turn, you can fusion someone Ancient Gear monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. So it's pretty strong. If you have this and another Ancient Gear in your hand, you can make your Howitzer. And it's a pretty power, pretty decent card. It is a level 3, so it can get a little... It doesn't really work with a lot of these level 4 monsters, but it's a mandatory 3 of, at least in my opinion. Then we have the Gadgets. The Gadgets are from, uh, these are from the movie pack. These are pretty 
staple, in my opinion, mandatory cards in any ancient gear list because uh, it allows you to get your gear, your gadgets out and get your play, get the ball rolling pretty fast. You can get your wyvern out and search and then make a gig again and continue from there. Um, not too much to say here. They're pretty much mandatory staples in most machine decks nowadays. Then we have the two gamma seals. Um, Sometimes, as big as these monsters can be, Ancient Gears don't have the easiest time getting over a big monster like Chaos Max without burning a lot of resources. Yes, Lightning is a card, but Gamma Seal I feel like is pretty good in any kind of, uh, because being able to get rid of that problem, monster is always nice, and you just attack over it, it's pretty... Um, you can play other cards in the slot, but I feel like Gamma Seal's pretty strong. And the one Maxi, because it's Maxi, like, as long as it's legal, you should probably play it the max amount you can. The three Gear Town, we are still running Gear Town. Um, and I feel like a gear town's pretty much good in any kind of ancient gear deck because you have so many cards that can pop it, uh, and it's pretty strong. Uh, it also allows you to cut your reactor dragon's tribute number down to one, so you can easily tribute summon it just by summoning a, having a gadget monster online. That's pretty strong. Um, that's and uh, the important thing to remember is can miss timing. That's very important. It has old text. Uh, it doesn't have like problem solving card text, but it can miss timing. It's very important to remember. We have the three Catapults. Catapult and Wyvern always have this contradiction with this deck because you can search Catapult with Wyvern, but then you can't activate Catapult from there. Um, but Catapult, Catapult is basically sort of like an ancient um, gear, uh, sort of like a hero lives for for without the cost. Basically, you pop a face-up card you control and then special summon one ancient gear monster from your deck, but ignore summoning conditions. So if you want to play ancient gear golem, you can summon it via this. And you can also... And then you could also banish it from the graveyard, then target, and then destroy a face-up monster you control um, to summon an ancient gear token, which is good for tribute fodder. You could theoretically, you can only use each effect, you can only use one effect per turn, but the, you could actually play probably something like Foolish Barrel of Belongings and use it just for its grave effect, because being able to pop a card and then put tribute fodder online for your ancient gear reactor dragon is nice. It's really up to you, um, but I feel like the card in any kind of standard Ancient Gear last is a mandatory 3 of because you want to see it as often as possible. Upstart Goblin, for consistency reasons, we have the 3 Ancient Gear Fortress. Very, very powerful card. It allows, While it's on the board, your, your Ancient Gear monsters you control cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects during the turn of their normal special summon. So this prevents cards like, for example, Dryden from ruining your day and... Your opponent also cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of Ancient Gear card or effect. So it's important because if your opponent has something like Solemn Strike, for example, they can't negate your Hunting Hounds on Summon Effect or its Poly Effect. So it basically means you're going to, as long as you have a Fortress out, your opponent's going to have a bad time. Um, pretty powerful. I feel like Fortress is a mandatory 3 of in any kind of pure Ancient Gear list. The one Overload Fusion, your Chaos Giant is actually a Dark Monster. So if you Fusion Summon via Hunting Hound or Poly, you can then activate Overlap Fusion and make another Chaos Giant. Pretty strong. Uh, being able to summon 4 f 5k. I feel like 1 is perfect because you don't want to see more than that. Um, so yeah. The two Terraformings, Search your Gear Towns. I've always played Terraforming this way in a deck like this. Gear Town, while well, you want to see it, it's not something you, you want, don't want to ever draw your Terraformings after popping all your Gear Towns. The two Twin Twisters, back row's a thing. You want to clear back row, and it's an OTK deck. So Twin Twisters is pretty much staple in any kind of back row deck. Um, Post-Maximum Crisis, you could also play Cosmic Cyclone because it turns off those. It, you don't really want to Twin Twister the uh, Draco spells and traps. The two polys, yes, you have your Hunting Hound, but there's times where you do need a little bit more oomph for your fusion plays, so I still have poly in here. You could probably play something else, but it's up to you. The two, one Ancient Gear Reborn, the main reason you only run one is because if you can search it with Wyvern, but you can't set it to that turn. It's very important to remember, and it, I'm a little iffy on the card, but you definitely, I feel like as a one of, it's perfectly fine. And then the two Dimensional Barriers, this could theoretically be anything else, because Wyvern does prevent you from setting cards, but, you know, you can always set it and then summon your Wyvern. Uh, I still feel like Barrier, if you have them, in most decks, you could probably afford to play a couple copies. It's because it's chainable and it's pretty much the best trap card in the game right now. And for the uh, for the Ancient Gears, we have the two Chaos Giants. Um, yes, typically when you summon a Chaos Giant, it's going to end the game the turn it hits the board. But sometimes you can summon a second one. And, you know, being able, I feel like there's times where the second one does come up. I've seen some replays and stuff of the deck in action. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty decent, powerful card. Um, I like it a lot. Um, it's, it, being able to unaffected by spell traffic X and be able to, to prevent your opponent's monsters from floating and doing piercing damage, uh, when this hits the board, if your opponent has a field full of monsters, it's probably going to end the game. 
Then the, probably the more underrated card of the new Ancient Gear cards is Ancient Gear Howitzer. When I first read this card, I think I underestimated how good it was. Like, uh, it's kind of, but the main thing is, it's, is, is that a lot of times when you do summon this, your opponent is going to have to answer it with a kaiju, or it's going to get its grave effect because it's unaffected by other card effects and it burns your opponent. So a lot of times I've seen Ancient Gear players will do is they will summon this, then, then uh, beat it into something, summon a reactor dragon, and then go from there. Um... You play three because the third one does come up, and you're going to get into grind games. You will summon the third one. Then the two Gear Gigant X. Um, with the toolboxes of this deck, you could probably play a, just play one Gear Gigant, but I feel like you have the space, so why not? Gear Gigant is really combos really well if you open, say, Gadget and uh, any uh, level four. If you open a Gadget and a level four um, uh, Ancient Gear, you can basically search box and search something else off your box effect. Pretty strong card. Um, pretty much a staple in any kind of ancient gear uh, deck. Then we have a kind of an interesting tech card I've seen in some lists, which is number 59, Back the Cook. So if you're unfamiliar with what this card does, um, while you control another cards in the field, this card is unaffected by other card effects. Now, that's not what you care about. The main thing is once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach and see material. This card destroys as many cards you control as possible, and this card gains 300 attack until the end of the turn for each monster destroyed by its effect. So... This card is actually really good because it gives you a way to chain, destroy your ancient gear cards and get their effects without having to, you know, have you know other pieces in hand. It's really nice because if you say open, say you open a gear town, but you don't have catapult to pop it, you can just, you know, if you have a gadget, you can just rank four into this pop and have another way to pop your gear town and get your and get the ball rolling. Um, I think it's a pretty, actually, pretty strong tech in um, this deck, so I definitely would consider playing it. For the rank nines, we have the VFD. Yes, this card does not come out until Maximum Crisis, so it's important to remember. The extra deck is pretty fluid with Ancient Gears because you don't tend not to go a ton into the non-Ancient Gear or Gear Gigant cards. Then we have the one uh, Phantom Fortress, as we said in the previous thing with the True King Dinos. Um, being able to banish stuff targeting is always nice. Dwellers, pretty much going to be, I think, I was, honestly, should be, if you can make it, it should be in your extra deck, because with the True Kings coming out and preventing those True Draco spells and traps from floating is important. We have the one Castell, being able to spin annoying cards before you make an OTK push can be necessary at times. Same thing goes for Dire Wolf, being able to pop back row before you make an OTK push. Then the Lightning, because even though Ancient Gears are pretty big, there are times where if your opponent something something like unaffected by stuff like Chaos Max, you can't always go into your Chaos Giant to get over it. So, yeah. So, all the way, guys, uh, let me know what you guys think of ancient, my Ancient Gear deck profile down below in the comment section. Uh, what do you think about Ancient Gears? Do you think they're, they're going to be good? Do you think Are you going to be playing them? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, I thank you guys for watching. It's Warstorm, signing out.